Okay, hello everyone. Here's a quick look at my Sacalobra Magic Road with elevation data generated from LiDAR. And the first thing I'm going to show you is the alternative, and that's the shuttle radar topography mission. And I'm going to zoom out here and show you uh, that this is very low resolution data, 30 by 30 meter squares. It's impressive if you look at the whole world, but if you zoom in, it's just not enough for our purposes. And the reason I'm showing that is because that's the elevation base map that is used for things like, or a very similar elevation base map is used for Ride with GPS. And it was what Strava used, but Strava's refined it and you'll see how successful they were with that later on. And here we have the LiDAR. And the problem with the Spanish LiDAR is got a very low point density. So although I've managed to um, sample this so that we've got quite reasonably high resolution, it's nothing like what you saw with my Mount Hood Magic Road. And what I can do is I can just put, take off the, um, the ground view and you can see the surface view. And these are the photons returning first. And so they've hit the tree canopy and you rely on a, high, a large number of photons getting through. And there has just been enough for them to get through a lot of the tree canopy and demonstrate the road. So we have a road and we've sampled data from that road. Uh, and so we've got much higher resolution data than we would have otherwise obtained. Now let's look at some example uh, elevation plots. So here is my, my data and I've smoothed it just to make a point, I've smoothed it, it a, a lot. I'm using the old GPX smoother here, but um, this is just for demonstration. And you can see some recognizable parts and you'll know they're recognizable in a minute when I show you the rest, uh, recognizable parts of the ride. And here are, here are the corners. And so the elevation has gone up in the corners. So we've got a defined geographical location where we've got elevation changes. And as you know, elevation often goes up on the inside of a corner. And if we look at the Garmin Edge 1000, this is a particularly poor track and it needed a lot of cleaning up but you can see some of these same um, features. But if we go further, we've got a Wahoo element bolt and we can really see these features correlate very well with my LiDAR data. And further, we've got a, a Garmin Edge 530. Again, we've got great correlation. You can see it go up at the corners. You can see all these features, this little pla plateau in the slope there. Um, it's all very nicely correlating. If we look at Ride with GPS, using that low resolution elevation base map, it's all over the place. It's, it's not really recognizable as the Sakalobra ride. Whereas you can see that I've got my LiDAR data and I've got three other de devices that, that correlate pretty well. And I've got correlation with defined geographical points. Um, are there artifacts that I've introduced? Yeah, there may well be. For example, if you go down through a dip in the road or over a little hump on one side of the road, sorry, if the LiDAR has, has I've sampled a bit of LiDAR that, uh, data that's that's gone over that. Um, the Magic Road is obviously a big road, but I've just sampled a very fine track. So you'll get this bar across the road. You won't really see any of those, many of those, um, only if you know they're there. Here's another track. Um, this is a track from Velo Reality, and you can see these recognizable points, but you can see it's a very smooth, very, very smooth track. Um, and here is Strava, and we'll come to how good Strava is in a minute. It's very good, but you can see it, it, it loses some of that fine detail at the corners, uh, which we are picking up with the devices that use a barometric altimeter or with the LiDAR data. So Strava's done very well. Uh, it's far better than Ride with GPS, but you are losing some fine detail, which I, I think is pretty safe to say we know is there because um, it, as you know, as I say, it, elevation goes up round corners often. And uh, these are defined points that we're seeing this change on several set devices. So uh, we'll just look at the uh, charts of the comparison. Um, here we've got an elevation plot and everything correlates very, very well, uh, we, except for Ride with GPS, which is, which is all over the place. But you've got Strava and the devices correlating very, very well. So um, 
do you use a ride do you use lidar or do you just plot from strava good question um if you want a quick ride plot with strava and you're not going to get any difference in your workout that's going to be 40 plus minutes of good going uphill uh, that's a great workout use someone else's ride you're going to see that elevation up around the corners a little bit better than strava and use LiDAR and you're going to see it even more. There are areas in the LiDAR data which are missing here. For example, that's where the photons can't get through because there's rock in the way. That's There's a very narrow opening in the rock above there and um, th there's overhanging rock here. So these are areas where you just won't see the road. Um, but with just some linear interpolation across there, uh, results in in very reasonable data because actually if you take your Strava uh, plot and I can't see the Strava plots here um, you end up with points spaced pretty far apart so there's interpolation between that anyway so um, that's uh, that doesn't detract from our route so there's only one other thing to say and that's the corners are very tight on this road the as you saw the the LiDAR data is not as good as the LiDAR data that we had for Mount Hood, for example, or for um, Box Hill in the UK. Um, so I'm really constrained about where I can sample and the corners are very tight. And if I open out those corners, I will change the elevation. I'll put in the text of this comment as well, because I think it's important to know that. Um, if you have one meter between points and you have 20 centimeters elevation gain, uh, move those points by 20 meters apart and you change the the, the grade from 20% to 16%. And you could say, well, why don't I use points further apart? Well, of course, you're going to have to interpolate between them and you'll, you'll get a track looking a bit more like Strava. Again, doesn't change your workout, uh, but it's just nice to have something uh, something here. I can't guarantee how it will work on Magic Roads too, but here it is. Enjoy the ride.